like to introduce Joe Pace, Director of Eagle Scholars Program from MSU. And my name is Craig Harold, and I'm the principal at Lee County Area Technology Center. And we're going to be covering a little bit of information about dual credit based around a career and technical uh, program. The dual credit program at Moorhead State University is designed to allow students to take college courses with increased academic rigor at a variety of courses along the high school and college curriculum. We seek to provide options so that no matter what course a student takes in a high school, there would be a comparable dual credit course aligned with that, whether that be through CTE or as part of the general education uh, guidelines. So we do want to provide a number of courses so that students can, you know, can earn hours along the way. We also have a long history of college access, and we believe that students should be able to take courses regardless of ability to pay. If the students are bright, if the students are academically prepared, if the students need the academic challenge within the high school, then they should be provided that opportunity and dual credit or college credit or college access should not be based uh, strictly on financial means and the ability to pay. We want all students who are qualified to be able to participate in these programs. Our original focus within the dual credit program was that all students within the Moorhead State Service Region should be able to earn 24 college credits before they graduated high school. Now, in order to, you know, in order for students to receive 24 college credits, we understood that we must offer more than that. So we looked across our academic departments and identified over 40 different courses that can be offered as part of dual credit. Uh, the off, we offer a number of CTE courses in agriculture, computer information sciences, art, and applied engineering to help students meet these qualifications across the, across the curriculum. We also offer courses in foreign language, English math, science, as well as a number of elective uh, courses in art and uh, music and uh, a variety of other areas, uh, physical education, health and PE. So, so we do want to offer a number of courses. We also understand that these courses identify and benefit specific students in these curriculum so that we are offering students you know, we're offering courses in areas that students are interested in and we want to provide academically rigorous courses and challenges across the curriculum that will benefit all students and we are pleased with our CTE offerings as well. One of the main challenges we face in, in offering dual credit courses is the identification of qualified faculty. The student, the, excuse me, the faculty that participate in the dual credit course have to meet the, the university guidelines for an adjunct faculty member. And that would include, they would have to have a master's degree and they would have to have 18 graduate credits in the teaching subject. Now we would require, you know, we require uh, some demographic information as well. We have to have official transcripts on file documenting these, you know, these hours. But we also have some departments that utilize um, industry certifications, such as our CIS 101 course. And with these, we do allow we do allow faculty to teach with the certifications, granted they have a master's degree completed. Now this is designed to ensure that the faculty are, are meeting standard benchmarks and that 
the faculty are credential are credentialed and qualified for the courses that they are teaching. This has been one of the one of the largest issues with working with faculty and uh, providing additional dual credit courses to students across the, across the state. We have seen a number of CTE faculty that are were initially hired in based on industry certifications and this has been a you know this has been an issue but we do want all faculty to have a master's degree we do want all student all faculty to have at least 18 graduate credits in the teaching subject so that they can meet our, our national accreditation guidelines that are required for all faculty One of the requirements of dual credit is students must demonstrate eligibility and the ability to be successful in the college courses. This requires some type of benchmarks. Uh, normally, the dual credit program at Moorhead State requires a 3.0 high school GPA as well as an 18 ACT subscore. And we also have some state benchmarks in various courses such as English, which would require an 18 uh, English subscore and math courses which require from a 17 to a 27 for calculus. Um, this year we are not penalizing students based on uh, ability to take the ACT so we have removed the ACT requirement uh, for dual credit students at Moorhead State as well as most places and we are looking more heavily at the high school uh, GPA as an indicator for success uh, in the college courses. Now these courses will be listed on the high school and college transcript and there are scholarships to help students cover the costs of dual credit courses. All students receive two Kentucky dual credit scholarships that they can use anytime during their high school career and students are also able to use the Work Ready Scholarship, which are designated for CTE courses uh, that can be used uh, over the years. The cost for dual credit scholarships that are not covered by the Work Ready Scholarship or the Kentucky Dual Credit Scholarship will be $216 for a three hour course. At Moorhead State University, we do have a history of college access. We want all students to be able to participate. So we have a program where we allow students to use the two Kentucky Dual Credit Scholarships with Moorhead State, and then we would cover any additional, uh, any additional dual credit courses that they take in partnership with Moorhead State at their high school. So we do have a program designed to allow all students to participate with the courses offered at the high school at no out-of-pocket cost and uh, this would allow all students to participate in the variety of courses offered not just be limited to the first two through the dual credit scholarship or through the work ready scholarships you may be asking what does it take to teach a dual credit course now we've already talked about academic requirements with transcripts and master's degrees and and graduate courses within the teaching subject but this really is a partnership so the university will provide a syllabus for the course and we do want to ensure that this the course is taught at a college level and the students are receiving college level learning. So there'll be various assessments uh, associated with the course. But we do require, uh, you know, we do require a textbook or some kind of software that the students will use to cover the requirements of the course. We do have a common gr uh, grading scale within the departments. Uh, we have also identified multiple student learner outcomes. Uh, these SLOs are part of the course and we expect all students completing courses to master uh, different SLOs depending on the course that they are taking. 
but we do want this to you know we do want this to demonstrate college level learning we track the students to see how they how they perform in the next college course and historically the dual credit students are are excellent students they consistently outperform the freshman class they do exceptionally well in the following class and we do see much higher rates of success you know in the dual credit programs versus the uh, on-campus programs uh, on the Moorhead on the Moorhead campus and this is also reflected in the literature nationally there are some departments that have specific requirements uh, that would include our English and math subscores, and we do have some departments that have uh, extra fees or or pieces that are associated with the course. Uh, students in our health and PE have to have to uh, purchase and have available multiple um, protective equipment that they use for safety first aid and for some of these other um, some of these other programs and uh, departmental requirements. The information provided so far is focused on Moorhead State University because that's where we're, that's where I'm located. Uh, but the key to a successful dual credit partnership between post-secondary and a secondary location really dissolves, uh, revolves around partnerships. There are numbers of opportunities that you need to look at, uh, but we need to understand that you need to have certain cooperation. You need to have, you need to invite people who are on the same vision. You want to, you want to bring people in that are going to try to be creative and be flexible and not try to force you to work within their model only. There are a number of groups available uh, KCTCS is a incredible partner. We, our, our original plan was to include a KCTCS rep with this presentation, uh, but that kind of fell through at the last minute. But with dual credit, especially with especially with CTE, most of dual credit is going to run through KCTCS. They are the preferred provider. They do a better job at this than other than other providers. Uh, we've got partners that want to work with, you know, more with Moorhead State, but we tell them up front, you know, for certain courses, especially the nursing and some of the CTE, KCTCS is the preferred partner. They do it better than what we're going to do. You also want to look at, at implementation. The ability to work cooperatively and to fit pieces together is the key. All the universities and all the post secondary all the post secondary institutions are going to have some kind of some kind of restrictions, some kind of some kind of guidelines that are going to prevent them from being all things to all people. So you want to work with people who have you know who have the ability to implement, and it may just be for a piece of it. But when you're able to bring in those multiple pieces, your students are the ones who are really going to benefit. One other piece I want to look at is industry certifications. We need to look at a broad view of what additional learning looks like. This can look like dual credit. It may look like articulated credit. It may look like a certificate. And it may look like credit for prior learning. But all of these things, when, when used cooperatively, will give you a much better, more enhanced program on the back end than any one of them can be up front. So don't just look at your closest post-secondary partner. Look at all dual credit and post-secondary partners. They can all bring different things in. Some of them are better than others. Some of them have pieces that are exceptional. So you may not get everything from one provider but your students can benefit by a successful partnership, but you've got to look at the partnerships and we all need to be working on the same common vision, same common uh, ability to work together, and it may just be working for different pieces, but the cooperation and the collaboration are two points that are incredibly vital to success of your dual credit programs. And 
Craig Harrell will talk about how he used partnerships with post-secondary to develop an exceptional program in one of the poorest regions of the state of Kentucky. I'd like to tell you a little bit about Lee County Area Technology Center. We serve three rural districts in eastern Kentucky, Lee, Wolf, and Owsley County. In the state of Kentucky's 120 counties on the Kids Count Survey, these three counties were ranked 120, 119, and 117. The three feeder high schools have a combined enrollment of less than 900 students, of which 80 to 85 percent of these students are qualify for free and reduced loans. These students face barriers, but with a strong community and building strong relationships and partnerships, we were able to offer our students many advanced opportunities. The presentation is focused on dual credit based around career and technical education. The place that you start is your program of study. So at Lee County Area Technology Center, our students have access to automotive technology, welding, construction carpentry, electrical technology, pre-nursing, office technology, and medical administrative assisting. 95% of the Lee County high school students will complete a pathway with many students upgrading with an academic core. So all students will have access to dual credit and industry certifications. And many students will take advantage and actually have dual credits in career and technical education along with their academic classes, dual credit. All the students that attend the ATC will have access to some form of dual credit. Last year, for the first semester, we offered 451 dual credits at the Area Technology Center, and this is only the career and technical education dual credits not the academic dual credits that were offered that help students along their career their career pathway. This was five out of seven teachers that were eligible to give some form of dual credit. Next year, we will have six, and we're hoping to have the seventh teacher credentialed by the beginning of school this next year. Now, we already learned that all the programs, or almost all the programs, offer some form of dual credit. But for the uh, sake of time, we're going to cover one pathway at Lee County Area Technology Center that we've been successful with and used as a pattern to build for our other pathways. It's our pre-nursing pathway or program of studies. Most of you have heard of the A to B nursing. So. What we offered at the high school level was medical terminology, principles of health science. We offer a body structure, which is anatomy and physiology, but is not a dual credit class. And we offer the nurse aid. So what we wanted to build was the next level. So we wanted to add in the prerequisites for RN, which were General Psychology, Psych 110, Human Anatomy and Physiology 137, uh, Math 146 or Math 150, which is College Algebra, and English 101. What I'm showing you here is the checklist, is a snapshot of the checklist or the requirements to be a RN at Hazard Community and Technical College. Most of the KCTCS programs have the same exact requirements. So that's what we started building with as we made our plan to improve the dual credit program at Lee County Area Technology Center and have our students at an advanced place when they graduate high school. This is 
the requirements for an associate's degree at MSU. We had a lot of students that was that were planning on going to MSU to the associate's degree. So we took both requirements and compared them and saw that they were very similar. This is really where we made a great jump. I had contacted a lot of the four-year universities and had gotten in contact. One had actually returned the call and actually sent me some information about the requirements for the BSN, and that's MSU. And a really good tool, this, this is a snapshot of the tool that really turned it around for us, was MSU had, had their course requirements, but they also had listed was the KCTCS equivalent. Then we started having meetings and really built a strong partnership between Hazard and Moorhead and the nursing coordinator recruiter come in to talk to the kids. And we were really planning a couple year down the road program, but actually uh, this first year with this checklist, we had two students accepted into Moorhead's BSN during their senior year. When, so when they graduated, they started in the BSN and would only have three years with these requirements. Now, as you can see, these requirements are a lot of gen ed. So we had to rely on the classes that were offered at their home high schools and had to work with a partnership for Hazard. The high schools had to be on board letting these classes substitute for other science classes, uh, but it was really strong push and it was really happened pretty fast. We thought this would be a two to three year process and it happened really in one year, maybe two. Now, we try to allow everybody equitable access and opportunity to dual credit. Now we do focus around career and technical education, but that seems to keep the students interested. I'm going to talk about a couple of mind shifts, game changers, that made a difference over the last couple years that really helped our students out. We, like most schools in the state, offered college algebra to students. We even offered a pre-college calculus second semester. The issue was that only kids beginning their senior year with the benchmarks could access college algebra. That was very limited in our area. But we had a large group of students that had a 19 to 21. And then we had a, we had a few more that were down like on a, a 17 for a math ACT score. So what we developed was first semester, those students would take a remedial class just like they were at the college. Now, we worked to get a remedial class. We couldn't get that approved. No dual credit scholarships would pay for it. So the teachers actually developed their own. So those students would do a remedial math class first semester, then we would retest and then if they had a 19 to 21, they would actually take a math 146, which was college math concepts. If the kid got the 22 needed for college algebra, then we actually had it set up to where they could actually take a college algebra class. And I'll talk about the type of math classes that we did offer. We were able to do the same thing for English. We had a lot more students that qualified for English, so they were those students that already had benchmarks would have access to English 101 and 102, but those students that were below benchmark would do the remedial first semester, and then we would retest those, and they would be allowed to access English 101. We worked to offer a Psych 110 class and a digital literacy. We had someone who could offer that dual credit at the high school 
We had kids taking those online, and we also had another area center that broadcasted that in for a certain number of students. So, but this was really the game changer, was when the feeder high schools decided that if a junior who wanted to go to college that didn't have benchmarks going into their senior year, did they really need to take the standard English 4, or do we need to switch it up to where they can, we can do the remedial class and have them ready for college? The kids excelled, so then we changed it to where they could actually take that first dual credit second semester if they qualified. Now, we're not doing anything that hadn't already been happening. Kids could have already accessed these math classes, science classes, and stuff online. Our first move was to offer support. So what we had was a blended supportive model of instruction where the college professor worked with a facilitator to support the student and student success. These programs, we did not have the staff that could offer the dual credit. So we had to work with partners uh, you know, to offer these classes. The first class that we offered was really the uh, Bio 137. We had a nursing teacher. She could teach anatomy and physiology, but the students couldn't get the dual credit. So the way that we set it up was the students that had the benchmarks and qualified for Bio 137 actually took an online class in a blended supportive model being facilitated by the nursing teacher inside that classroom. Now when we talk about blended supportive model, what, what we had was the teachers, uh, the college professors would actually come a few times depending on what, what they needed. They would come in, introduce the kids, get the kids started. They would uh, collaborate one to two times a week. They would uh, allow the teachers inside the blackboard shelves where the work was being done and turned in, like a teaching assistant where they could access and help keep up with the activities. We had a commitment from the college professors that would communicate with the kids, with the facilitator, and at times, they would actually need to call the principal to where I would have to meet with the students, just like you would a kid that's not working in the classroom. The real success came when we offered the Math 146. We could have offered a technical math or an applied math with kids that had a 19 to 21, but as we researched our pathways, and we'll look at a little bit of that later, is the 146 had the same ACT benchmark requirements, but it counted for an applied associate's degree of any kind. And it would also cover the quantitative reasoning component of an, an associate's of arts. And then for students that were seeking an associate's of science, it would not count as a quantitative reasoning in category one, but in category two, it counted as a core class. So those students were not losing out on anything. We also offered a medical insurance class, the same model. We had a uh, college professor with the facilitator model. And, that, and really and truly, this may have been where we came up with the idea. We had a college professor, and, and she was doing all online, and they... They weren't servicing high school students, but first-time students weren't being successful. So she had an idea, and she had a focus, and I had her meet with my uh, medical administrative assisting teacher, and they became and built a team, and they really perfected this facilitator professor supportive model. And that's what really made a difference in the success of the students. I think we had uh, we had 26 students take medical insurance. No, 28 students take medical insurance, and 26 of those passed. 
those 28 students were the only ones to ever take medical insurance in the state of Kentucky. That was an approved dual credit for us. And hopefully I'll talk more about the success for the math and the Bio 137 as we move along. Now this is, this is a model of our medical billing and coding pathway. Again, we had medical administrative assisting but we were trying to offer our kids advanced opportunities. So if you see on one side, the high school classes that we offered were uh, medical terminology, medical office procedures one, and we offered word processing or intro to computers. So that's what the, we could offer the students in-house at the high school level at the ATC for dual credit. So for the students to complete this cert certification or certificate or this high school certificate, they also needed the basic anatomy 135 or what we switched over to is they would take the 137 and 139 because that also qualified them for the RM program if they wish to go that route. Plus that also covered the gen ed natural science with the lab. The students would have to take the medical insurance class and then we actually had a couple kids take the medical coding and advanced medical coding and those were with the same professor and facilitator model. So our goal was, and this is, I'm showing you the medical, but this is what we had going on with most of the programs. You would have a program where you would have three to four classes taken during high school and they would need three or four classes also taken during high school but would have been dual credit offered you know with a college professor and that way the kids could qualify for a credential now with covid we didn't get to to that level but we were hoping and i think that the community college was on board for our students to receive those credentials as they graduated high school. Now I'm just going to show you a couple of snapshots of different checklists. What happens a lot of times is we separate these kids out. We separate them out in, into career and technical education and we separate these kids out into college bound students. Well what we've learned at Lee County Area Technology Center is that it's one and the same. If we start working early, we can make these plans work. What I've got here is a general occupational and technical studies applied associate's degree checklist, the general education checklist, and I think this one came from Bluegrass. It's a drop down, and of course you can make other selections, but I'm showing you here how that the students just taking the gen eds that we talked about, the dual credit gen eds, qualify for a general occupational and technical studies applied associate's degree. If the snapshot went on down, it would show you that all the, uh, the kids needed was the technical core classes, which a lot of those the kids would have already picked up in their ATC classes, you know, through their sophomore, junior, and senior year. And a lot of those are free now because of each kid getting two CTE scholarships starting with their freshman year. Here I've got a couple of drop down menus for an Associates of Arts and Associates of Science. These are drop down menus that I got from the community college years ago and I share these with the students. This way they can track and keep up with the classes that they need and can almost advise themselves to what classes they need if they wish to get an associate's degree, either associates of arts or associates of science. With my Lee County students, the associates of science is actually a little easier to get because of what dual credits they offer. They offer uh, extra dual credits in math and science, where some of my other feeder schools may be easier for the kids to get the associates of arts because they offer more history and humanities, depending on what teachers they have that can do dual credit. Now, I have those same two drop-down 
which is Associates of Arts and Associates of Science, with the requirements that it takes to be accepted into the BSN at MSU. We actually had two students to qualify and get accepted into that program this year. Again, that was uh, more than a year ahead, but the, the kids with these lists went ahead and took extra classes their senior year so that they could be accepted into that. The thing that I wanted you to actually look at is now this is, is not any additional classes that your high school may offer, but just those classes based around a CTE dual credit, that would give a kid half of their associate's degree. See, and the students would actually have more credits than that because we would have a medical terminology credit for their principles of health science. And this model works the same for my automotive program or carpentry program. So again, that's what we're talking about here is yes, it's dual credit. Yes, it's a brown CTE, but really the kids do not have to make a choice between the two. Okay, this is kind of reviewing the uh, process or model that we worked with is that using our advanced pathways where our students not only leave with a secondary credential, industry cert, and dual credits, but we're hoping that they leave with a college credential. And like I'd said before, that could be a 3-3 model or a 4-3 or a 3-4, and the first number being the, the classes we offer them at the high school, and the second number will be college classes offered during high school at the ATC with a college professor, hopefully with this blended model. Uh, I did want to say with that checklist, I was able to give that, that checklist to a student and with the classes and stuff she already had and through her work and working and getting herself an advisor at the community college, she actually got a, an Associates of Science and was very close to getting an, an Associates of Art. So she got an Associates of Art, an Associates of Science her senior year at Christmas and was, and was completing the Associates of Art. So I don't know if we got that with the COVID or not. What we have here is what something we took advantage of was the college likes to call it, they don't like to call it articulation or like that. They like to call it credit for prior knowledge. They like to have students that's passed the test. So this is out, actually out of the rules for the automotive program and diesel program, whereas my students have taken an automotive class and passed a industry certification and will receive college credit for that class. We've actually used this several times when students uh, wanted to go to Hazard or another community college and complete their associate's degree. So once we dug into this and learned that this was a possibility, we had the opportunity to build more opportunities for our students. Now, I know this slide's not very clear and it's hard to see all the classes, but a lot of these classes were industry certifications that Hazard Community and Technical College was willing to give our students college credit. For, and what was happening is our kids would take the classes with a teacher that couldn't give dual credit, but because they had like a B in the class and they passed an industry certification for that class or that program, then they actually got dual credit. And the good thing about this is, is they didn't have to use their scholarships. It didn't cost them any money because it was testing for prior knowledge. So that was a bonus. So I hope this has been helpful, but I'm going to, I'm going to share the plans that we're looking at for our students at Lee County Area Technology Center in our little region. So we're hoping to add a computer science and that's going to be with Breathitt County ATC and MSU and Hazard Community and Technical College where we're broadcasting classes in. We did a pilot for this where they broadcasted in computer science classes to a couple of students 
and we broadcasted medical administrative assisting back to them. We were looking at an industrial maintenance uh, credential with Somerset Community College. The one that I was really excited about is the added to manufacturing with 3D printing. We're hoping to build a program with EMT, with Corbin ATC, where they have a teacher that can offer that program, and then we would broadcast back to that to them a program that we have. What we started doing and getting a lot of partnerships and relationships built with is our apprenticeships. Uh, that's with Amtex and the Carpenter and Millwright. Students can test and get uh, one year of credit in a union or in an apprenticeship. We've got strong relationships with these apprenticeships where they visit with the teacher, uh, take a letter of recommendation and actually give them some credit that way. We're in the process of building a medical assisting program and an apprenticeship model for that. What we've came up with there is, is some of the healthcare facilities, their definition of a medical assistant is different than the college degree medical assistant. So they've developed a program or apprenticeship like model and we're we're working with that and actually having some success where they'll actually hire two kids uh, from each of the feeder high schools out of the medical programs to serve in clinics. Uh, we started having kids hired straight directly out of the program. Many employers recruit that way and now we're actually having a competition for the students where Post-secondary schools are offering our scholarships, offering our students scholarships. We have a couple community colleges that if our students want to go to that community college and one letter from recommendation for the teacher, our students can go for free. And those are outside of what we call our service area. to introduce Joe Pace, Director of Eagle Scholars Program from MSU, and my name is Craig Harold, and I'm the principal at Lee County Area Technology Center, and we're going to be covering a little bit of information about dual credit based around uh, career and technical uh, program. You, here are the emails for myself and Joe Pace if you have any questions or we can help you in any way, please don't hesitate to send us an email.